Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. <coughs> Brendan Rodgers remains favourite for the Celtic manager's job. John Hughes could be on the verge of leaving Inverness Caledonian Thistle. And Alan Stubbs says he has long-term plans at Hibs, even if they lose the Scottish Cup final. Just a few of the talking points in the company of Alan Ruff. And I'm delighted to say our boot room guest tonight is none other than long-time servant at Dundee United, Morris Malpass. Morris, great to have you with us uh, on the programme. Um, I, I like to get someone on the programme who's spent even longer than is humanly possible at a club. Ruffy, you never thought there was somebody on this programme that would be longer than you at Partick Thistle, but Morris, 21 years at Dundee United. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I, I think I was 15 years at Partick Thistle, but as Morris will tell you, when you're there, I enjoyed every minute of it. You know, I loved it. It was a great club, family club. OK, we didn't have a lot of success, but uh, the fans were super as well. So 21 years is impressive. Absolutely. And the great thing about it, Morris, is you signed for a year and then you had a 20-year option then. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that I, I don't think I ever uh, got near an option. I think I've, my first contract was two years. And then every time you, you were doing reasonably well, it just gave you, John McClellan, so you fancy another two years, another two years. Um, I was one of the, the few that never really had a, an option clause in my contract. Um, and as Alan says, it was, I enjoyed it, you know. I, I, I played every place, played in Europe, played international. Um, the only reason you maybe move was for the money, but I was never really money motivated. Uh, I just loved the, the atmosphere of the club, I loved the camaraderie at the club. And obviously loved the results. You know, we played in ten cup finals. Well, I only won one, but um, well, the club, the club had a reasonable bit of success. Yeah, and in contrast, <coughs> does I mean, is there a tremendous amount of sadness at what you see now and where Dundee United are going? Well, I'm concerned. You know, they're a ticking time bomb for me just now. Uh, behind the scenes, it's the shambles. Uh, the fans. Uh, the fans have showed a, a new side to me. Uh, I never really thought there would be a group of fans that would protest. They turned up at games with fantastic support. When, we, when I played, they were fantastic. Uh, obviously, I still go back. I always felt there were a type of fans that would support and support and support. But they've turned, you know, they've <laughs> turned, <laughs> turned over another leaf and they've uh, started to criticise uh, the board. Um, and that, that just doesn't. The Dundee fan, Dundee United fans that I, uh, I know. Yeah, and with that in mind, I mean, Ray McKinnon is there, but it's still not papering over the cracks, Morris. You mentioned it's a ticking time bomb. What do you think needs to happen to try and change the fans' attitude? Well, the fans want the board changed. But that's easier said than done. You know, the, uh, the Thompson family have put a lot, of, a lot of money into the club. I don't think they'll walk away. Very few people would walk away and lose money. But the fans seem to think they've got a right now to dictate who should run the club. Um, I think they've got to get behind the team, and Raymond's got to try and steer steer away from the what's happening behind the scenes and concentrate and get the team on the pitch and get the the fans back supporting the team uh, and forgetting about the the madness behind the scenes. And hopefully the club. You know, it will grow on the park and it will help it off the park as well. Yeah, Ruffy, um, it's going to be a tough league for United to get out of next season. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's why he'll be, he'll want to have a good start. You know, want to try and get the fans that Morris is talking about back on board uh, because it's really important. Because if you've got a fan base that isn't behind the team every time you have a wee bad result, you know, they all jump in a bad wagon and it affects the, the young players on the park as well. So it's important that they do get things sorted out really quickly. Yeah, OK. Um, two other matters emerging today. Uh, of course, over the last couple of days, Ruffy, I've mentioned the fact that uh, there are more favourites for the Celtic job than enters a Grand National. Um, Brendan Rodgers seems to be front-runner. Dermot Desmond on camera saying, you know, he's a great manager, the, the ideal pedigree uh, for Celtic. Um, so all they need to do now is somehow work out whether Brendan Rodgers takes a £7 million mm -hmm. hit and leaves uh, that two years of payments that he's due from Liverpool. Yeah, and only he, he will know uh, what way to go in that one. Uh, when you're out of a job, sometimes you've got to make sacrifices. You know, that is a massive sacrifice if that's the money that you're talking about. But certainly to get a job like Celtic, you know, it could be a stepping stone for him. Uh, 
to bigger things, you know. But I, I just think if you're not going to go for the top man, he would be as good a choice as what you've got. Yeah, um, there's a wry smile on your face there, Morris Malpass, because you've got to understand if you had millions in the bank, maybe you could take a £7 million hit. Uh, I was just going to say that, <laughs> that, you know, they're all, always say he's a multi millionaire. I don't think he'll be really worried about whether he's going to he'll lose that kind of money. I'm sure he'll get a decent wage at, at Celtic. Um, and it'll be one of these things that, well, that's what's happened. What's your viewpoint on the league? Because the return of Rangers is certainly, uh, I say thrown down the gauntlet because obviously Rangers fans expect them to challenge for the title. So the board's going to have to respond at Ibrox. You've got Aberdeen there uh, starting to strengthen their squad. You've got Hearts w with a clear intention to try and, and push Celtic all the way. Well, I think Rangers coming to the league is fantastic for the league. You know, you've got your 50,000 uh, uh, more fans every week or every week they're at home back. Um, I think they'll find it difficult unless they go and spend money and get players. Um, you know, Celtic have stagnated probably the last two or three years because they've never had any real competition. They've won the league at a canter and they've been poor this year. Been, I could actually go and say they've been hopeless this year. They've won the league at a canter. But I think the overall perception of Scottish football will grow this year because the old firm are back. The hype will be there for the old firm games. Uh, you ever go down south, that's the only game they really talk about is uh, Celtic and Rangers. So that's back. I, th I just think there will be a massive lift in terms of people want to watch the, um, the Premier League. Yeah, I, I, And in contrast, I mentioned <coughs> the clubs that potentially have the financial clout to at least try and strengthen in, in Scottish football terms, um, but other clubs are finding it difficult and they'll have to look in a more bargain basement uh, transfer market. John Hughes looks as if he could be on the way out at Inverness, a, a club that you spent a considerable amount of time at because, quite simply, he doesn't have the resources to get people. I, I always thought over the last 24 hours when Miles Story joins Aberdeen, I thought that, that might be the straw that broke the camel's back. I think it's the same old story for Inverness. It's, it's easy to identify players, but to actually go and get them to, one, to come up to Inverness, uh, and two, to pay them enough money. Um, you know, And they'll always be the same. They, they live within their means. Um, They've won the Scottish Cup, which was great. They were in Europe, so they've, they've earned a couple of extra pounds. But I don't think their budget will ever change. You know, I hear the, the chairman saying that uh, Yogi's got the biggest, the highest budget ever for a Amber Nice manager. But in relation to some other clubs, it's probably peanuts. But that's just the that's the ballpark he's in. You yeah. know, he, uh, as I say, it'll be easy to identify players, but to convince them to come up, you know, you can't wave the checkbook at and say, "I'll come." You know, you, they'll come because of that. Uh, well, we used to have to sell it. We never took the, we never took new signings to the training ground. Sometimes never even took them to the park. <laughs> we took them into the town and showed them the lower restaurants and took them down to see if Nessie was going to pop his head up <laughs> um, and try to convince them that they would be on the TV umpteen times a year uh, if you if, if you play well against uh, the old firm. You can get a move back down south. That was our biggest way of selling the club. You could never ever sell it by saying, there's a cheque, there's your <coughs> wages. Because yeah. oh, guys could earn more non-league down south than they can at the lower clubs in the, the Premier League. Uh, uh, and yeah. again, uh, I think you and Terry had great success. You know, um, I, I think that's the way. If you grasp that, if you mm -hmm. know exactly what you're into, Ruffy, that's the way you conduct your business. Well, I think any time we, <coughs> we, we spoke to Terry, you know, it was all about having a family club. You know, and if you can get the players up with their wives and their families, I'm sure Inverness is a, a beautiful place to live. And they, they, they used to go away fishing and everything. Yeah. And, and everybody seemed to be get on great well yeah. uh, together. And, and that's that's why they got the success on the part. Here's the biggest problem, though, Ruffy. Uh, you know, as a, as a manager, if you decide to leave, as, as we've witnessed on this programme, so many people struggle yeah. to get back into a job. Yeah, it's a bold move for him, you know, but uh, I think Yogi will obviously think that the success he's had in the last two or three years might be good enough to get him a job somewhere else. But as we know, every time there's a job comes available, there's 50 candidates. You know, he would be another one on the 50 interviews. So it's a massive gamble for him. 
Okay, um, we've got lots more to talk about in the company of a man who spent 21 years at Tanadice uh, and a wealth of experience of coaching as well. Uh, and let's not forget 55 caps, two more than Ruffy, may I add, um, and he's not happy about it. Uh, Morris Malpass um, may well uh, be back in management. Uh, there's a chairman somewhere there who might be looking to have a little chat with him. That's what happens in the summer. You get a job. Uh, then again, sometimes you don't. We'll talk about that with Morris. We'll talk Playoffs coming up next. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, our boot room guest tonight, I'm delighted to say, is a Dundee United legend, Morris Malpass. Um, Morris, uh, obviously, your playing days, you'll always be inextricably linked with uh, United, but as a coach, uh, when I look at the experience, Motherwell, Hibernian, great times at Inverness as well, um, I would imagine you yourself are desperate to try and get back into it at, a, at any level. Yeah, one of the many trying to get back into the game. Uh, I miss it. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I, I was coaching uh, when I was playing in 1990. I started coaching, done my badges. I uh, was assist manager at Dundee United in 95, 96 with Billy Kirkwood. Um, and I've coached and managed. Uh, thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, and missing it, I go back and I drop you a hat. Yeah, and with that in mind, Robbie, I, I'm looking at. <coughs> You know, this new project, Scotland, looking at coaches, looking at trying to develop uh, the youngsters to get us back onto some kind of level of qualification. When you look at what Morris has got to offer, uh, you look at a man who's played in a UEFA Cup final, you look at a man who's played in a European mm -hmm. Cup semi-final, won the league title. Uh, I mean, even if there was no club available, I cannot believe that the SFA mm -hmm. wouldn't utilise the services as well. Yeah, that's the disappointing bit about it, when somebody's put so much into the game. You know, as far as Scotland's concerned, I don't think there's enough rewards, uh, enough people actually holding their hand out and saying, look, here, here's a place for you. You know, I know they do it down in England quite regularly. If you look at all clubs, you know, they've always got a tradition there. Even the FA give give people like Morris with the qualifications he's got, they find something, you know, and put something back into the game because I'm sure that's what Morris will want to do. Yeah, and in the modern day, Morris, I would imagine if someone said to you, look, we've got a young guy here, you you know, maybe take a, a more director of football type role. That would something that I think, would that appeal to you too? Yeah, I would look at anything, but that type of thing uh, would appeal to me. Um, yeah, as I say, I've got the experience. Of, <laughs> I've seen it done. I got a T-shirt um, on the bad side as well as the good side. So uh, it's something I'd like to pass on. I, that was the one thing that you know Jim McLean never had the opportunity to pass on any stuff to us. We <laughs> we'd fallen out with him by the time we <laughs> left the club. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he's ill just he, he's ill now. So. You know, I would like to pass my experience on, um, but obviously you've got someone that's wanting to, to accept that and a club that's prepared to do that. Yeah, um, you had um, a look at Wraith Rovers uh, over a short period of time. Uh, they fell foul uh, of the, the playoffs, didn't quite make it. It's now Falkirk uh, against Kilmarnock over two legs. What's your take on it from what you've witnessed from both clubs? I think it's... For a club like Wraith Rovers, it's a great target at the start of the season to get in the playoffs. It's a bit of a false thing. You know, you, you finish fourth. And I, I'm not criticising uh, Wraith Rovers, I'm criticising the, the playoffs. They finish fourth, 20 points behind the top team. Um, and that gets classed as success. That isn't right for me. But for a club that size, it's, it's a fantastic uh, target they can set themselves. Um, you know, you normally find that one or two clubs are virtually guaranteed to be in the top four. Another, you know, there's another two, two clubs out of the, you know, other six or eight. I've got a chance again. That's decent in yeah. terms of percentage. Um, Falkirk for me this year have been enjoyable to watch. I've seen them a few times. Difficult team to play against. They've started to score goals, which has made a difference this season. And I think I've I've got them as favourites against uh, Kilmarnock. I've seen Kilmarnock a few times. And I think I've just seen them, maybe seen them on just really bad days. Um, 
but for me, Falkirk are the favourites. Yeah, uh, I mean, Ruffy, I mentioned <coughs> to you yesterday, I've got them down to win both legs. That's mm -hmm. I'm in Morris's camp on this one. Yeah, I'm not too sure about the both legs, but I do think they'll win it. Uh, I think they're going into the game. The players in the dressing room, the dressing room will be absolutely buzzing. You know, they'll be desperate to get out there. If you go into the Kilmarnock dressing room, I think it might be a wee bit quieter. You know, there's a lot at stake for them, obviously getting beaten 4-2 next week. They need to find something desperately, so they're not going into the game. Uh, with the same, you know, thought that uh, Falkirk have got, and I think they've just got the advantage. Yeah, I, I, you know, just listening to what Morris said there about, you know, some people's view of success over the course of a season. When he was saying it to me, all, all I could think of was Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, f qualification for Champions League, that's it. Whereas the Arsenal fans wanted the title. Yeah, I mean, that's where you're a successful club. Uh, you want to keep winning, and when you get a taste of winning, you want to win all the time. And uh, I think that's to get back to Falkirk again. I think they've just got just got that wee bite, you know, and ready to taste the big time. Yep. Um, just before we talk about the Scottish Cup final, um, Liverpool a hard one to stomach. Great opening goal from uh, Daniel Sturridge, but in the end, uh, Sevilla just. I think eventually they'll get to keep the UEFA Cup. Yeah, I think it just shows you the state that the English football's in just now. You know, I don't think there's any team this year apart from Leicester. Obviously, have. I've jumped out and, and been fantastic. They've all had ups and downs, Man City, Man United. And I think Liverpool just fall into that category. As, as Morris said, uh, Wraith Rovers were 20 points behind the winners. I mean, I don't know what Liverpool were behind. Seventh or eighth, they won't see European exactly. football next so, season, so, Ruffy. So I think that just sums up, you know, going into a final with that kind of form. Yeah, uh, it's strange. The money is all going towards the Barclays Premier League, um, Morris, but it certainly doesn't suggest that they're anywhere close to winning the Champions League. That just seems to be dominated by, if it's not Bayern Munich, it's definitely all the Spanish clubs. I think the English teams are soft now because of the money they get. Players, I don't think they've got that little bit extra that they used to have. If you go back to the Liverpool team uh, in the 80s, they had a few beasts they could play. But the biggest thing was if they lost their goal, there wasn't a panic. Last night, um, they lost a goal after what, 17, 19 seconds of the second half and were in pieces for the next 20 minutes. They had got their half, they were umpteen attempts at goals. Now, for me, that's just players being soft. They'll be, they'll be probably looking at the bench. Oh, what do we do now? Yeah. Whereas, you know, the good Liverpool side, the Sooners, is the Dalglishes and that, they knew what to do. They never looked at the bench. They got on with it. They kept the ball for 10 minutes. Maybe never went up the park, but kept the ball, frustrated the other team, and then suddenly they're back in the game with a goal. Um, I just think that there's a softness in English football because of the amount of money they get paid. And I was like, well, that sort of attitude for me. Arsenal haven't won anything for umpteen years. Majority of managers would have been dad marked. Yep. Um, but because they get into Europe or into the Champions League every year, it's a massive success for a club Arsenal size. Just getting there, is that enough? Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, uh, I know, and for the benefit of our younger viewers, Dan Mack is sacked. Just thought I'd keep you right up to date with that. <laughs> we knew what he meant. Um, the other point here on that, yeah, Ruffy, you don't win anything if you mm -hmm. haven't got Scots in your team. It's as simple as that. Yeah, well, that's the way it was when the success down in England. I think every club had at least three or four uh, Scottish guys playing it. And as Morris said, we, we seem to have that wee bit of dig. We think we have, to, we have that wee bit of not want to be uh, losers, so yeah. I think maybe that's what they need to do. OK, just briefly, um, because there's a lot of talking to do ahead of this Scottish Cup final. The managers and the captains have been speaking today, obviously trying to put on the positive front. Alan Stubbs says he's got a long-term plan at Hibs. Um, it'll get even longer if he lands the Scottish Cup, Morris. I think his long-term plans will be for, <laughs> what is it, three days now. <laughs> Make sure at the end of the three days is, he's got a, a bit of silverware. And I've been... And really enjoyable to watch at times this year, um, and shocking to watch at times this year. There have been a few things said, you know, how good the team are, um, how they're the best in the league. Well, they're at the stage now where they've got to go and produce something, and it's a difficult one against Rangers, who are flying. Yeah, OK. Uh, <laughs> Hibs are Rangers? Rangers. Yeah, I've, I've said Rangers, uh, but the only thing I give Hibs a bit of a chance with if the if they came out and rolled their sleeves the way Rangers did against Celtic and things went their way on the day, but it looks as if it's Rangers Cup. 
Yeah, I just wonder what strip they'll be wearing because they seem to be in one heck of a battle at the moment, Ruffy, with the, uh, the the Sports Direct battle. I mean, they're they're clearly calling the bluff here, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, only the people there will know what's going on behind the scenes, but uh, I don't think they'll come out in t-shirts. Yeah, and the last word, I'm, I, would, <laughs> I can't see that happening. The last word, Ruffy, um, because it's not, it's not worthy of Morris giving me comment on this, it's more worthy of you, Morton. They release a strip and the fans are just not having it. If there's no blue and white hoops, then they're not buying the strip. And Morton have actually now decided they're going to have to go back to the drawing board. I mean, fans are the fans are the guys that are paying the money. They're 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 wearing the strips. So I'm sure they, they should have some say. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know how ridiculous the strip was, but if that's what they want, then why why not give them it? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Morris was part of a, a Scotland setup that had a few ridiculous uh, strips in his time, but uh, that's for another program, and we'll feature most of those pictures as well. Um, I, I think the last word on this: great to have Morris Malpass with us. If you're a chairman out there in the summer, you're looking for someone with experience. Doesn't get any better than a man with uh, over 800 appearances for Dundee United and 55 caps. It's been a joy talking to Morris Malpass from Ruffy and myself. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow at 7.